We'll start now. by the way. <laughs> okay, so you guys have been more than great. Um, it's amazing to have so many, you know, industry partners here. Um, so tell me, um, let's see, are you guys watching the chat or is it just me? Um, let's see, everybody start asking your questions. Let's see, we have Tom Prashna uh, Shaka is saying that you inspired him to do live streaming on sports. So uh, you're obviously a, a fairly influential person here in this small market. Um, Mike Lotta is asking about if anyone knows about video live and real networks, uh, a.k.a. the real audio player. Oh, I remember that. You remember that, Bruce? Yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was, it started out great because it did things others didn't do, but then it quickly got outdone by competition. And uh, I think what happened was we got – the software didn't keep up with the hardware or the net. And so as we got faster net and faster hardware, the software didn't keep up and we switched. But yeah, yeah I do, I do like remember the, using it. Kind of like the AOL of uh, video players. Yeah. I do remember it though. It was really hard to, um, it was really hard to integrate into websites. I remember that. Oh, speaker video. And of course, back then we were making websites with like Composer and ugh. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we had. So, so I've got the um, I've got Zoom set to speaker view. So whoever speaks goes full screen. So it's like an audio controlled switcher built into Zoom. That's a handy you, tool. What do you think about that, Tom? That's amazing. Yeah, see, he didn't have to switch to you to say that. Uh, I talked to somebody at the UN that was actually looking to rig one of those up. They had like uh, you know forty diplomats, and they couldn't keep track of them all, so they needed to just audio switch them. <laughs> you can do that um, in the TriCaster now. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Uh, so you know what? We weren't getting a lot of uh, questions because there is about thirty to forty-five seconds of latency on YouTube. But here comes a couple more. Um, and uh, Sirius Live is just just joking about. Do you guys remember how expensive bandwidth used to be? I don't really remember because I, I mean, I'm a little younger than you guys, but uh, I'm, I'm, I, I did hear about like ISDN lines where you had like four telephone lines and it used to cost like $100 a month or something. Well, we, we used to use regular phone lines and 1200 Bob modems for our, our game servers. Yep. And that was just regular phone lines. Jeez. Yeah, I wanted to actually have the sound of a modem for this, but I didn't get a chance to. I'm just like, you guys remember? <laughs> um, yeah. Do you, I was excited you... the first time I got a 56K modem because uh, I'd been dealing with 14.4 before that, and I, I think a 28.8. But 56 felt like I was blazing fast. <laughs> So here's a good question um, from Sirius Live, and this is something I've actually thought about too, and none of us are from Content Delivery Network, so it's not like there's a conflict of interest, but um, do you think that like these expensive Ustream and Livestream companies are going to have an issue with the future when YouTube Live and Facebook are making it free to stream? You know what? When, when people buy a CDN package, you get what you pay for. You can buy, you can get a free package, you can get a basic package and learn what you're doing. You get a professional package when you get better at it. But when you go to the top of the heap and you get an enterprise package from any EN that costs thousands a month, the reason is you're going to make thousands a month. That's why they're so expensive because you're going to make, you get, a, you get an event with five or 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 viewers, you're getting big checks in the and that's why the enterprise solutions cost money because they make money. Got it. So it, it, it is, it's more premium. There's less latency. There's more buttons. There's actually next week, I forgot to mention this, we're interviewing um, Tiki Live, which is a really interesting CDN that actually turns um, 
In fact, maybe I'll just show it off really quickly. It basically turns uh, your live stream into like what you would think of as like an on-demand video content. So it's like a 24-7 on-demand style. And you can integrate like buy now buttons and things like that that you just can't do on YouTube. So uh, there's, I, I mean, I, I, see, I see definitely a uh, future for it. Yeah, we've worked with the folks at TQ Live. They're great. Down in Florida, I think. Yep, we're going to be interviewing them uh, next Friday. Here's just a look at their website in black and white, of course. But it is color <laughs> normally. Um, but there it is. And uh, you can see it's like on demand. So you can kind of, the, like, there's a lot. It's kind of like a on demand television. Uh, it's kind of cool. So there, there, there's a space, I think, for unique content delivery networks. But I think. I don't know. I mean, I think YouTube is the place to be personally because that I think you those YouTube subscribers and it being the second biggest, um, you know, search engine in the world and Google favors their search there. I think that's the place to be personally. I do see why Facebook is so big, um, and I do think you should use both. But I I don't know if I would want to pay hundreds of dollars for thirty seconds of latency. <laughs> well, I think it goes back to what Bruce was saying earlier. You know, when you're when you're using a CDN from Ustream or Livestream or somebody of that ilk, or, or even if you look at someone like Limelight, it's because you can justify the cost because you're generating revenue from it. But also the additional ancillary services that you're receiving in terms of the analytics, tracking, uh, the data points that you need to report back in, in a lot of cases. So you, those are things that obviously you're not getting with YouTube. And blackouts, you can blackout a certain area. Great point. Yeah, the uh, geo blocking. Uh, right. You know, it's, it's a lot of those features are things that obviously you're not going to have with YouTube. So to Bruce's point, I think it's a it's almost like a, a, a maturity process, right? You know, somebody starts off with YouTube Live and then they go to um, a higher end CDN. When I was at Livestream, we would constantly have that challenge where customers would come in under a basic plan and then realize in short order that they really needed to be in a premium or enterprise plan. Um, because it really would give them back the demographic information, the analytics, to Bruce's point, the geo-blocking. Um, so I think it, it's all scalable, and, and I see there's, there's a need for both. Yeah, and, and I mean, and when we say live streaming, we've got to be clear, there's all different flavors of that, right? There's, I mean, it just, it covers the whole spectrum. So Wirecast has always been about the production side, the, you know, same with uh, the TriCaster and any of the other streaming softwares out there, the production mixers. But there's also this whole system where people are just streaming premium content or OTT content that they want to, um, that's already pre-produced. It's, you know, it's already done. Uh, and they need to get that to a certain market live or live to tape later um, or uh, tape delay. So it, it just, it, you know, it's huge. And and when it comes to those types of solutions and, you know, you're going to start dealing with the big boys, the, you know, the companies that have the distribution networks um, and you need to pay to use their pipes. Um, and that's because you're making money off your content. Now, YouTube and Facebook are always going to be great because they're very democratic. Anybody can start streaming and get a big audience. But eventually you know yeah you're going to mature through if you do get big enough you get large enough either as a company an organization or as a streamer you're not necessarily going to want to be beholden to uh somebody's closed system you're going to want to have more and more control and to, over your own content your own viewers and that kind of stuff and that's where you see enterprise class solutions for the big broadcasters you know the premium content makers like you know the the, the studios and nbcs and abcs and hbos and all that stuff so um and telestream i think is cool that way because i actually get to work with people on that side of the fence of our company that are talking to those guys and we're actually working on bringing i mean as we see these worlds begin to merge uh broadcasting is no longer about just the airwaves it's about the net it's about the network so wirecast was 10 years down that road already and now we're beginning to walk, you know, the, the rest of it's beginning to catch up and we're beginning to see that. Um, and, you know, it's no longer going to be about your cable networks. It's going to be about your, your, your fiber optics and your, um, your network, your bandwidth and stuff. So that's where all the broadcasters are heading. So it's kind of exciting to be out there, out on this you know, precipice as the rest of the world is catching up and finding that it's useful for their distribution. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> So yeah, this you know, uh, live switching thing's working well. Go ahead, Bruce. You know, it's funny how many people, and, and it is the most popular ways to do this now seem to be YouTube and Facebook. And what people don't realize is the reason they're so easy to 
and free is because they are making the money. Those are the guys making the money from your video. And if you do get into a professional and package, you can make the money off your videos. Mm, good point. That's a really good point. Like they're, I mean, did you hear about Google? The, the, they just put out their financial reports and they got like $900 billion in cash and they own half the planet now. And <laughs> like, you know, they're making <laughs> money. Yeah, um, and I got some statistics to throw your way if you want them. Uh, so, okay, this is an interesting one. So we were talking about Facebook and its growth and why it's putting all its chips, just like Google is, on live video and trying to bring the content to them. If people provide them free content, Bingo. then they get free. They get it free, and then they can make they can monetize that. Uh, so it's where are the eyeballs going? And uh, so G Facebook's in the same boat, and they they've seen incredible numbers that have you know really that they've talked about. So here's the ones they've released. They said that uh, in May of 2016, well, let me put it this, let's start with 2015. So a year ago, April, 2015, April, uh, the videos on Facebook were viewed 4 billion times that month. All right, so 4 billion views that month. Now, fast forward a year later, May of this year, just a couple months ago, <laughs> the views on Facebook videos Videos specifically, their assets were up to 215 billion wow. in that Holy month. So you God. saw a 5,300 percent growth in 13 months yep. in terms of video viewership. And it's exponential yeah. too, and right? It's being driven oh. by um, the younger generations because uh, as they're raised on free video, I mean, if you go back 20, 30 years ago, video was hard to find. You had to go to the one box in your room. In your, in your whole house that would occasionally show you stuff. Now, it's not hard to find. It's everywhere. So kids are, and my generation and below, are getting raised on video. It's, that's what, how they process information. And so when they um, have done studies on the way their brains are working, the way they are looking to find content, they're not going to read articles. They find that 80% of millennials watch video before uh, deciding to buy something. So that's factoring into their purchasing decisions. Um, they also find that they are far more likely to follow brands that have video presences. I mean, just across the board, it's just who's got the video, that's where I'm going. That's how I'm used to, to getting information. So, uh, and so I think everybody's going that way. And it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. Text is, I wouldn't say it's dying, but it's definitely um, now just a, a, a secondary consideration. One of the great things about what uh, what Andrew just said is that we've got this whole generation of new content providers that eventually are going to get tired of producing content on their phone, and they're going to decide that they want Wirecast or they want VMix, and when they grow up and become big boys, uh, they'll they'll want a TriCaster. But you know of of. 100 million people that are producing video today with their phone, if 1% of those move on to the next level to get something that runs on a PC or a Mac, uh, you know, there's a million new customers for vMix, Wirecast, TriCaster, whoever, whoever's at that level. So I think, Paul, your bell curve that you showed earlier is, I think it's very accurate that we are at the very bottom of this, this giant hill of, of accelerated growth over the next you know, three years, but, but three years in this world could really just mean six months. I mean, who knows? Yeah, and Tom, one of the things, you, you've got a great way of putting things into perspective, I feel, especially while watching your show so much. One of the things I remember you said is that like, uh, you put things in tiers. Can you explain the tier system that you've come up with? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nothing fancy. I think I probably stole it from one of these guys. Um, <laughs> You know, tier, tier one are producers that are using whatever they have. They're using their phone. They're using their mom's laptop. Um, they're using a, a, their grandmother's computer, and they plugged a webcam into it, and they're doing something because it didn't cost them anything. Tier two is when they want to take it to the next level, and they're spending uh, $50 or $200 or you know, a budget of say $500 of le or less to really do a show that they're investing some time and energy and a little bit of money in, and they're beginning to get a little bit of cash back. Uh, tier three is the folks that now are doing something and they're spending, 
in the thousands of dollars and they're receiving more money back for what they're doing than they're spending it. It's not a full-time gig, but it's a, it's a, it's a professional hobby. Let's call it that. It's a professional hobby. They make more money than they do. Tier four is when they're writing checks that have the, you know, a comma in it for their equipment because they're going to go full time with it. You know, they're going to get a truck or they're going to get a studio or they're going to do, do remote TV production or whatever. And, and those are the folks that are going to be buying the custom machines. They're going to be buying TriCasters. Um, and at that point in that tier four, I include folks like, like churches and school, professional sports teams that, that know the value of the streaming. I mean, I'm working with a church right now that, is, that wants to go from tier one to tier four. Um, and it's just like, uh, you know, I got, a lot of learn, I got a lot of learning to do with them to get them up to the point where they're ready to support tier four because they, they haven't kind of gone through the steps. Um, but that's, you know, tier four is as high, high as I go, Paul. I'm sure there are tiers, you know, Paul's probably up here at tier seven, but I'm tier four is as high as I can get. Well, actually, we like to stay at, we like to go as far, as low as we can go, obviously, because the base is larger. Um, and it's interesting. I mean, everyone has their niches. I mean, Wirecast does great. They're the only Mac solution out there and there's so many mac users who are doing this stuff in fact we were at and uh andrew i don't know if you saw this but we were at nab and we got we stopped uh, a celebrity stop by red red foo he's kind of a celebrity he sings i'm right. sexy and right. i'm right. sexy I and i know it all stuff. he stops by and he's like i use wirecast you guys work with that I'm like yeah we work with wirecast wirecast is great he's like all right well i want a couple of your cameras i'm going to start streaming my house parties I'm like, really? A couple months later, you're seeing all these girls running around and people jumping into pools, and he's zooming in. And I'm like, oh, my God, he's using our camera at his house party. This is awesome. That's so, awesome. I mean, it's all over the map, you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, we get guys of all walks of life. I never know who's going to come in next. It can be anybody from someone with millions of Twitter followers or Facebook uh, fans or uh, just the uh, church down the road. Um, or we just helped our local school uh, get set up because they wanted to do some morning news shows for the kids. Uh, so th it just, I never know. And it's pretty interesting. That's, that's what's so cool about this stuff is that it's made it so accessible. You no longer need a $100,000 Grass Valley switcher and uh, um, a satellite truck to get a live video broadcast out to your friends, neighbors, or people across the world. Um, this is a really really empowering and uh technology and very democratizing technology and i think uh that's what we that's one of our our, our philosophies here at telestream is to get this tool into everybody's hands so whether you're a mac user or windows user uh we just want to make sure that you've got something that you can do this with and uh and then from there it's it's up to you what's your hobby what's your passion what are what's your story to tell so got a couple more questions in the chat. Um, uh, Smart uh, AV Turkey is asking if there's any way to distinguish our content from just chit chats. I, I don't know exactly what you mean by that. Sirius Live is saying he bought two PTZ Optics cus uh, cameras for a client and wants to port forward and view his RTSP stream just like his Axis cameras. You are on the right track. That's exactly what you need to do. If you want to view our cameras outside your firewall, you just need to port forward through your firewall and make it make it available out to the outside network. Uh, you can submit a ticket or read some of the um, some of the things on our knowledge base to learn how to do that. But uh, we're working on uh, actually using some really cool new technology to just stream out to the world. Um, which is going to be interesting because sometimes you want to control the camera from anywhere in the world, stuff like that, and you got to get through that firewall. So you need either access through virtual private network, a VPN, or you need to port forward that IP address. And basically, for those of you who know what that is, you're taking an internal IP address and allowing it to be an external IP address. You can also use uh, a dynamic DNS um, server as well. I've done that as well, um, and it works pretty well, but you have to pay for that. Um, and just submit a ticket. That's not my specialty, but you can definitely control the cameras from anywhere in the world. You just got to do a little bit of, uh, of tweaking with your firewall and your network. So I guess that's it guys. Um, thank you so much. We got 15 likes and two subscribers. So that is $47. Hi. 
for the Susquehanna Valley uh, Casa. They were really happy with their check last week, so that's almost $100 we gave them. If you're out there and you're looking, you, you know of a local um, charity, every week we're switching our charity, so just send me an email. Uh, we want to do a new charity every week to get more, just more and more people involved. Cool. That's really cool that you're doing that. Hey, thanks. That was that was an idea. I don't know how it sprung up, but we were just like, let's just make it public and have everybody chip in. So eventually, what I'd like to do is is uh, actually figure out a way to do uh, like charity matching. I forget what that's called, but basically, like if we're doing fifty five dollars, someone could click a button and then match the donation. I don't think we're at that point. We've only got twenty viewers right now, but eventually, who knows? Maybe we'll get a thousand. You'll get there. You'll get there. Well, if you do more cool streams like this, this was amazing. So thanks for having us. Uh, you've done a really nice job on the graphics and the effects. I love it. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, what, are you, what are you using over there? Um, we, I, we use everything over here. Um, I actually have a Udemy course uh, doing a full review of how we set all this up with the virtual sets and everything. So I, we use Wirecast some days. We use vMix other days. We have a TriCaster here. I don't use it much. Uh, um, just because I'm a software guy, I'm kind of like Tom. I like to do everything on my computer. Where my draw, I use Dropbox a lot because I've got like two computers. Um, get a lot of different things going on. So, you know, we use a little bit of everything over here. So, what do you think, guys? Should I roll the credits? That was yeah, great. Thanks. thanks for having us. Thanks All right. Again. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Take care. To subscribe. Don't forget to wear your safety suit. Don't forget to wear your safety suit. Bruce, you're gonna like this next slide. Hold, hold on, don't leave yet. That's all, folks. Ta-da, Bruce. I think you have a you have a future as a voiceover artist if you ever decide to leave the technology game. I I came from radio. And, there you go. And I, I, I 